That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. So for today's Daily Dose of Stupid, Chuck Schumer, yes, that Chuck Schumer, the one who is the House Minority Leader, or sorry, House, the Senate Minority Leader right now. Okay, I just, that's not quite a Joe Biden gaffe, but, you know, it is a a gaffe that I will correct myself on. Uh, He is the Senate Minority Leader, and the other day he actually threatened two of the Supreme Court justices And I do find this whole scenario kind of funny because, especially with your older politicians, and I know that they grew up in a different world and they learned to do things and learned to operate politically in a different landscape, so I understand that part of this is at least not their fault, it's just kind of how they've developed, but they operate as though there's not a freaking camera on everybody's phone and that every single thing that they say in a public place is going to be recorded and wind up on the evening news. Like, I think I see that a lot more with older politicians and you don't see it as much with younger politicians. Now, with AOC, she definitely has an awareness of that. She just constantly says stupid things anyway. But with Chuck Schumer, it seems as though he hides what he really thinks when he's on C-SPAN, but he forgets that when he's out talking to special interest groups and and people that are typically considered allies, that those same people are still probably going to post that video online not thinking anything about it because they're not exactly the sharpest knife in the drawer either. And uh, when even when he's speaking to a group like this, that it is a pro-abortion group, that he has to watch what he says because this is going to wind up on film, it's going to wind up on the internet, and then people can scrutinize it. And in this particular case, there's a, a second reason why, not just criticism from the other side, but there's actually a legal reason why Chuck Schumer should have been far more cautious with his words than he is in this particular clip. So we'll watch this. This is, uh, like I said, Chuck Schumer speaking to a pro-abortion group. I want to tell you, Gorsuch, I want to tell you, Kavanaugh, you have released the whirlwind and you will pay the price. You won't know what hit you if you go forward with these awful decisions. All right, so Chuck Schumer actually coming out and threatening Neil Gorsuch and Brett Kavanaugh saying that there is going to be a price to pay, that you are not going to know what hits you, you have unleashed the whirlwind, all these other kinds of flowery languages, uh, flowery ways of, of threatening them. And the big thing here, and this has been brought to the attention, I know I'm not the first person to talk about this, but threatening federal judges of any level of the court is a crime. And of course, the Supreme Court would be included in that. Uh, 18 U.S. Code 115 and I'm going to read the language directly. Whoever threatens to assault, kidnap, murder, or murder a United States official, a United States judge, a federal law enforcement officer, or an official whose killing would be a crime under such section with intent to impede, intimidate, or interfere with such official judge or law enforcement officer while engaged in the performance of official duties or with the intent to retaliate against such official judge or law enforcement officer on account of the performance of official duties, shall be punished as provided in the subsection. And the subsection, of course, is just essentially the penalties that can be brought against somebody if they engage in this activity. But this is a federal crime. And if you look at what this federal crime says, it meets all of the qualifications. Uh, it says if you do any of these things, assault, murder, or you know, intimidation, with intent to impede, intimidate, or interfere in their official duties, well, Judge Kavanaugh and Judge Gorsuch are duly appointed and installed justices of the Supreme Court, and he specifically said there that if you do this, if you make this decision on a case that you hear as Supreme Court justices, then you are going to pay a price for that. I mean, I don't see how that's not textbook intimidation, specifically in the functions of their job and their ability to perform, 
trying to influence a judge to rule a way that you find preferable and saying that if they do not do this, then you are going to come after them and you, they are going to be paying a price. Now, granted, that threat is somewhat vague. So he doesn't specifically say, like, we're, we're going to stab you or we're going to kill you or anything like that. And so that would have been far more direct. And so it's a little gray on the area of, okay, did he actually threaten to assault them? Did he actually threaten them uh, with physical harm or something like that? Well, no, he didn't technically do that. It, it's a veiled threat, but it is a threat nonetheless specifically in the functions of their duties. So because of that, and because it is a little bit vague, here's what I think ought to happen. Because this is incredibly serious. I don't think that necessarily you have to take it to the level of Chuck Schumer should be prosecuted, because like I said, it's kind of vague and a prosecutor. I'm not sure that you can make a good case that this would be a good use of taxpayer money to investigate this specifically because I don't think that you're going to uncover some kind of secret conspiracy that uh, Chuck Schumer was like hiring assassins to go after Kavanaugh and Gorsuch. I don't think you're going to find that or anything of that nature. But I think that it is fair that this is not something that a senator should be saying, and especially not somebody that is the minority leader. And so he should at the very least lose his position as minority leader, if not lose his Senate seat. I think that that would be appropriate reaction to this. And by the way, you know how pro-abortion I am. Or, sorry, you know how um, pro-life I am and how anti-abortion I am. But if there was a pro-abortion piece of legislation or there was a case that came before the Supreme Court and there were anybody that was saying, you know what, we're, we're coming after you if you pass this legislation or we're coming after you if you rule on the pro-abortion side of this case, that person does not need to hold the public office or especially a particular office of prestige like Speaker of the House or something like that. Like if uh, Mitch McConnell, granted I'm not a huge Mitch McConnell fan, so this isn't a great example, it's just the only one I can think of. If Mitch McConnell had threatened a Supreme Court justice and said, look here, Ginsburg, you better rule on the pro life side of this, or I'm coming after you, you will reap the whirlwind and there is going to be a price to pay. You're not going to know what hits you. I'd say, uh, yeah, Mitch McConnell needs to step down as my, as majority leader. And he may actually need to step down from his Senate seat for something like that. That's not something you do. You don't threaten a judge to make a decision the way that you think he ought to rule and say that you're going to face consequences for that. Now, since then, Chuck Schumer did a famous politician apology, not apology, sorry, not sorry routine, where he basically said, I shouldn't have used that specific language, and he, he tried to walk it back in saying, well, I was talking about paying a political cost. I don't think that you could make that case. That doesn't sound like what he was talking about, but I can't definitively say that wasn't what he was talking about. And the reason that I say that that's odd to say that they're going to pay a political cost is because they're judges. And even if you march past the idea that judges don't have a political leaning because, you know, they're human beings and they see the world a certain way. So let's just ignore the fact that they're not supposed to see things in a political light, which, you know, ideally they're not. Let's just look past that and say, but they're also not elected. They're lifetime appointments. And so how can they pay a political price for that? That doesn't make any sense. What would be the political cost to a judge? That's the whole reason that we have judges with lifetime appointments is that there is no political price to be paid for that. They don't make decisions based on the political fallout, or at least they're not supposed to. And so Chuck Schumer saying that is a, a really poor defense. Like if he had said exactly the same thing to legislation when it came to a senator that was going to vote a certain way on a bill, it's still inappropriate. It's still something that Chuck Schumer should not be doing. But at least if he's, his defense is, well, I was talking about the political cost. Okay, that makes a little more sense. There's not really a political cost for a judge, and that's why it's a very odd thing to use as your defense, saying that there's a political price to be paid when they're justices, they're not elected officials. But here's the thing. 
ultimately, this is what it all comes down to. Even if you're ignoring all the legality of it, even if you're ignoring the fact that Chuck Schumer really should face some kind of severe penalty for this, even looking past all that, looking sheerly at the content of what he was saying, let's say that there were actually a political cost to the justices for this, that they were going to pay that political price for whatever it is that they are going to do if it, they're going to rule in an anti-abortion way, which with Kavanaugh, I'm not even all that convinced that he's going to. But anyway, that aside for the moment, let's assume that what Ch Chuck Schumer is saying is correct. Let's assume that every word of that was right. That pales in comparison to the price that is going to be paid by Chuck Schumer for eternity for being on the other side of that fight. And not just Chuck Schumer, anybody that supports abortion. And so, even if there were a price to be paid, my immediate response would be, well, even if there is, that's a price I'm willing to pay. If it means I don't have to pay the eternal price that you're going to have to pay for supporting it. And that's where that conversation would end between me and Chuck Schumer. <laughs> My mother always said, if you can't say something nice about somebody, then you're probably talking about a leftist. Nah, I kid. But seriously, it would really help me out if you would like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm sure my mom would appreciate it.